Well, hi, Andy Kolb. Where are you Zooming from? I'm Zooming from my home in Colorado Springs. Ah, do you just hang out there in your library all day, every day? <laughs> I wish I wish I could. Actually, I did all summer, as we all did, I guess. But we have started school, and I teach uh, beginning strings right now. So I have been going in and teaching small cohorts, we call it, cohorts of students um, during this past week. Interesting. What what uh, levels do you teach and what's the name of the school? It's Thomas McLaren State Charter School. And it's a public school. And I have taught all levels since I've been teaching uh, orchestra. But this year, I've narrowed it down to just teaching beginner strings. So I'm teaching sixth graders. Oh, okay. I'll say extra prayers for you now. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay, well, um, thank you for being willing to talk to me. I think uh, there's so many people at the barn that know you from when you were in Wichita and then certainly all the golly decades that you've been coming back and playing. Um, and we're just trying to figure out a way to kind of let our patrons you know, stay in touch and let let them know what what these famous musicians, famous cellists do when they're not coming to the barn, and so we didn't get to see anybody this summer. So my my first question for you is, um, did you have a COVID music project? I didn't intend to have one, but I ended up having one just uh, by practicing the piano. So honestly, you were a little bit part of that because we were in touch at the beginning of the summer and how you said you would play a Bach chorale. And you know, Pablo Casals used to start his day kind of as a blessing to the day by playing um, some kind of Bach. I don't know if it was chorales or inventions but um we've had a nice piano since we moved here that really didn't get played much and i haven't played for years i used to play in high school and then i used to just play bad accompaniment for students once in a while but i've learned um quite a few bach inventions and i have really really enjoyed kind of getting in touch with the piano and i found it very um therapeutic and relaxing to do that there are there are lots of days where there's more piano than cello just because it's something fresh and new and uh interesting to me wow i'm very impressed um that's very cool i i did try to practice the piano i ordered five levels of this technique book that our dear friend nancy luttrell gave me um as a birthday present i'm kind of still in book one but <laughs> <laughs> i'm really good at book I one could, <laughs> i could zoom you lessons if you need some help <laughs> i i don't need lessons as much as i need to practice <laughs> i i i i practiced more because like you, it was exciting. I practiced more probably in April and May. And then, you know, then I, I had a garden I could go to. So I kind of did that instead. <laughs> well, that's very cool. Yes. Do you have an idea um, of about how many concerts you've played at Chamber Music at the Barn over the years? Or do you remember even when your first concert was? Well, I think it's been since two thousand so 20 years wow. but and i i haven't counted the concerts but what am i i i remember that year i think maybe that first time i played it one of the first things we did with me was the schubert quintet with tony arnoni and that was a fun concert so it was the fairmount string quartet with tony so yeah 2000 i think what did we play been, was this schubert, schubert quintet yep yeah. Ah, could have been 2001. I think 2000 because my first, I think I started in 99 at Wichita State. 
Wow. Yeah, I, I remember that Schubert Quintet because I was sweating so profusely um, in the oh. slow movement and there was no place to wipe your brow. <laughs> was that pre-air conditioning? Well, we've always had air conditioning. Um, we've always had air conditioning. Oh. But, you but, know, I think we might have maybe you used to turn it off because it was so noisy. I think do you still do that? No. no uh, I think uh, Mark Allen actually had some software that could extract um, extracurricular sounds from recording. So then I think we, we didn't have to do that anymore. But it's a memory. <laughs> yep. So that's a lot of years and that's a lot of concerts. Um, and we're both still upright. <laughs> yes. That's good. And, and I think we're both still friends, which can, is cool. Can you talk um, a little bit about, um, I'm assuming that you do enjoy coming and uh, to Wichita and, and playing at the barn. Is, is there any particular reason or, you know, compared to other concert spaces that you've played, is there anything that's different or that, that you want to mention about the barn? Well, I, do think it's it's pretty unique just that it's a that's the way chamber music should be i mean sometimes i uh, sometimes i it's it's not a maybe a acoustical phenomena like it's no carnegie hall but it is a great place to be able to just create chamber music with people close to you mm -hmm. surrounding you and looking down on you and i think there's just a great um, connection with the audience just because of the way it is set up and um, I do and also just being able to play chamber music instead of orchestra festivals which I have done and I like to do as well but um, it's not it's that intimate space and just creating good uh, music with friends and also having that connection um, with with people in that bar. And I think that barn is, is a pretty stunning environment and a beautiful place to play. Can you describe what it feels like playing in there with, um, with all that wood and, and, you know, friends and I, cause I agree. I, it is a very unique place. Um, I've never played any place like that. I mean, the only other things I can remember that were as, um warm in aesthetics you know uh were maybe some very small churches in new england where you you know you, the audience is really close and in those cases the acoustics are really good i i remember a concert playing dvorak um american that's the first movement starts so soft but there was this unbelievably loud clock in the room <laughs> it's it starts with the the violins kind of going booty 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 yes. <laughs> and you know and as it one of the best quartets ever written it starts with a big viola solo of course but they started giggling at this concert because it just this clock you know just sounded like it was so loud it was like thunder you know but somehow i think we kept it together but is there anything about the barn that i don't know that makes you really enjoy it or is is different from other places well maybe be you're right you could there are churches and there's that boomy natural acoustic and the barn doesn't have that and i think um I, I think actually it's just more real i mean even when i've gone back and listened to recordings uh i i, I want to make sure like it's we sound great but sometimes because you don't have that uh, great acoustic sometimes it's a little it's a little harder to produce a good sound and yet uh, i think it's a, re a, a more authentic experience because you are so close and you are hearing maybe the rosin against the strings or every little thing that happens um, when we play there. But 
just the ambiance. And you're right, the wood, the sled up above, the beautiful um, artwork behind us, and the big log poles next to us. Um, I don't know. I can't think of a. I can't think of a place like it. I mean, I just really think, it's, and the and the people on the sides too. I just feel their energy while we're playing, and yeah. and leering down on us from above. Yeah, 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 or, yeah. But it, yeah. What yeah. are some of your fondest or uh, outstanding memories? Do you have any uh, specific rehearsals or concerts? Anything that kind of stands out? in your mind um, as as being a cherished memory or something when you think of it you smile a little bit well i think the one that comes to mind for me is the week after alex was born uh, we did the cello concert so it was all cellos and i got to play with uh against just some cherished friends all cellists in the Wichita Symphony and we did the Via Lobos, um, uh, Bacchianus, two of those and some other cello choir stuff but it was just um, an intense experience bringing my son into the world but also actually really at the same time I think having rehearsals with these good friends and then being able to put on those concerts um, I definitely Remember, remember that and a actually bringing Alex, Amy and Alex came to the, the, those concerts and he was just maybe a week old or so. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that was, that was a good one, but there are a lot. I mean, it's just really good. All the new and old friends that I've made playing the concerts through the years is, uh, is really, it's just, been a great experience. Do you have any um, reflections about what chamber music at the barn has meant or what you think it uh, might mean in the future to our community, to our patrons, like on a kind of a more philosophical scale? Well, I think just as far as community, it really builds community. I just have always thought it's a special place to go. Oh, I, rem I remember you saying, wasn't it your first or second year where you did that interview for NPR and you made some comment like, it's really, it's not like Kansas there. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, oops, but Kansas is wonderful. Don't get the wrong idea. <laughs> but it is, it's a, it's a magical place. I mean, that just brings people together so you can just enjoy good music and forget um, forget about the everyday, I guess. And I also think from the mu musician's perspective, how nice it is to just be able, I love rehearsing at the barn. And I just remember when I did live and work there and we did concerts as a quartet and we would see each other all the time through the academic year and then what we have to play some more in the summer, but it didn't feel like that. It was always fresh because it's such a it's such a, a special environment, and it's so beautiful out there at the barn, inside and out. And I just appreciated that and noticed just the difference and how different things felt, even as musicians. But the barn, I also remember just some fun outreach concerts, whether it's was kids bringing kids in or whether we went out and played, I think we had a movie themed concert once where we went to some centers and uh, played some fun things. And you bringing the, um, your matinee concerts where you bust some elderly in, I think that's a really some condensed concerts. I just think it's a wonderful offering for the community in um, just a, like I said, a magical place. I think it's just really just beautiful. And I know I, either during intermission or before concerts, I try to make it a point to walk around the pond and the grounds and just everything because it's really, it's just so beautiful and it brings kind of some peace and tranquility before we, we 
we do our music in case uh, if I'm nervous or if we're playing something kind of wild or difficult, it's just a great place to, it's just a great place to be. It's ideal. Yeah. You no, know, I remember when um, I first met Bob and we started talking about this as a potential idea and he said, oh, well, what shall we call it? Uh, shall, I, shall I name it a Swiss Chateau? Shall I have some exotic name, you know, for the barn? And I just said, no, it, it's, it needs to be chamber music at the barn because it's an absolutely stunning barn. <laughs> and there's kind of that yeah. juxtaposition of that earthy, you know, um, wonderful quality of Kansas, but then the chamber music comes and fills it with, uh, you know, centuries of good stuff, I think. Yeah. Okay, yeah, next question is a really hard one. Um, what is your favorite piece of chamber music uh, that you've either played or that you, even if it doesn't have a cello, could could you could you pick something? I know it's very difficult. It probably has a viola in it, though, and it's probably by Hendeman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I think I. I think that answer changes through the years and and it, in whatever time we're in. I So one I've already mentioned, so I think uh, the Schubert Quintet is always a favorite and I just, I love all movements of it. I just think that's a masterful work. I think it was the last thing Schubert wrote and then um, I'm a big fan of the Beethoven quartets. So, and I, I haven't been able to play all of the late string quartets and one that I haven't played that I know you have, um, is, oh, now it's Opus 131, right? The C sharp minor. Yeah. yeah. And I, that has always been a favorite. Um, I think getting to know it in college. And it was just one of those always a, a go-to piece of music that um, it's, I mean, seven movements and complicated key, and it has so many different characters, but for some reason that quartet always just struck a chord with me. And I just, I just love it. And it's the, I think that Guarneri string quartet, I think they did two rounds of recording Beethoven quartets, didn't they? So it was probably their earlier quartet uh, recording, but um, that that does it for me, that piece. Wow. I remember when we did play it at the barn and um, one of our patrons said that they'd been a fan of that quartet their whole life and they never dreamed that they'd ever get to hear it played live. And that was, <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty cool comment for somebody to make. Um, that was a big, it was, yeah. that was a you know, ambitious. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, have you watched the movie? Isn't it called The Quartet? It's uh, with, um, is that the one about the retired musicians in a, in a, kind of assisted living place no no that's the one that was recommended to me i think so i thought i was going to be watching that but this other one that's i uh, see i forget now i think that's it has quartet in the title but this other one is i think the quartet and it has oh that's it, it has philip seymour hoffman is that his name yeah it's awful <laughs> but they use they use the music from 131 and so i thought well maybe and actually the music and the recording they use is good but that you you can tell they tried to be trained trained to fake play oh. it's a, i i couldn't stand it so anyway stay away from that one and i still like that quartet but oh my goodness and that movie that that quartet 
especially the opening was kind of the recurring thing throughout. And it was, I think, like Brentano's string quartet um, that, that helped train them and they used their recording. But anyway, do not recommend. <laughs> Good to know. Come see live chamber music at the barn. <laughs> do you have any, I don't know, Final thoughts. We're we're looking at our twenty fifth season, although I'm not even sure we can say that because our twenty fourth season was COVID, but it, it will be our twenty fifth year um, next summer, and we sure hope to get you and and your lovely wife and son out there um, to participate. But I don't know. Do you have anything you'd want to say to our patrons besides we miss them? Right. Well, I would think uh, that I, I hope the patrons feel as I do, like that, what a special place that the barn holds in my heart. I mean, when I was thinking back over these 20 years that I played, like that's the, for me, the longest ongoing music festival that I've been a part of. And I just, I look forward to it. But so much because of the friends I've made and connecting with new people that you introduce and new people that come into the area. Um, and I think that's great, but also connecting, being able to see you and play with you and seeing some old colleagues. Um, it's just a really, um, it's a beautiful place that I, I, I am, I'm, I'm just so thrilled and happy to be uh, a part of it and have so many cherished memories through the years and hope to create more memories on the other side. Gosh, I guess, I guess speaking of the other side, I think that I will, I will be 50 when the 25th, no, is it the 20, 25th? What year is it for the bottom? Yeah. 25 next summer, 2021. So 25 times two is what I'll be when I, <laughs> when I return next year. 50 <laughs> years young. That's right. <laughs> well, Andy, thank you so, so much for, for taking time to, to talk to me and to our patrons and um, gosh, yes. You're a, another little, fan. Your, your little puppy dog has been uh, coming up behind you <laughs> throughout the interview. What What is his name? Her name? That's, that's Trudy. Oh. There's Trudy. And the other two are away. But she she's my dog. She likes to hang out with me. So she needs to be part of everything. I can see, and Trudy, Trudy needs her after school time. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> and so do you. Me too. Yes. <laughs> All right. Especially on Fridays. All right. Look forward to seeing you next summer. Okay.